Hi, welcome back to Clarinet Headquarters. Uh, I'm Meredith Gersten. If you haven't had a chance to watch my introductory video, I do suggest you go back and watch it. Uh, I believe that it's important that you know my background and my reason for wanting to start Clarinet Headquarters. Although, I did forget to share that uh, I have a bachelor's of music education from the University of Kansas, and then I have a master's in clarinet from the University of Northern Colorado. Uh, so I'd like to get started on lesson one, and not all my lessons are going to be numbered, but I mean, that really doesn't matter. But the reason I called this one lesson one is because uh, of, because it's about the embouchure and because I do believe that your clarinet embouchure is the most important aspect of your playing. If you don't get started with a good embouchure, then it can set up a lot of different problems with your clarinet playing. So what you'll need today is you'll just need your clarinet barrel and your mouthpiece along with a reed and your ligature, of course. Okay. Uh, so the first thing that I'm actually going to do today is the first thing I'm just going to uh, help you find your corners, okay? Now, after that, I will give you like a, I will explain a step-by-step -step guide as to um, how to make a proper clarinet embouchure. However, if you're not sure how to use your corners or how to engage them or what muscles they are, then the rest of it isn't really going to work. So the reason I'm showing you is because has, if anyone's ever tried to wiggle their ears, you know, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, if you can't wiggle your ears, you don't even know what muscle to start with. So that's why I always start with uh, having students find their corners. Um, as a side note, if you already have been playing clarinet and you've already got your embouchure down, I still suggest that you watch this video because it may help you find um, any bad habits that you may have picked up along the way and or it may help you as a teacher or as a band director when you're working with your clarinet section. So in order to find your corners, uh, my grandpa taught me how to whistle when I was a little girl. So you're going to kind of put your fingers like that on either side of your corners. We're not going to whistle though. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push out with my fingers and with my corners I'm going to try and stop that from happening. So I'm going to have to engage my corners and try to push inward with them. Okay, if you try that a few times, uh, you should be able to find your corners. And in that case, I really hope that, well, that could even be used as a corner exercise. Another way you can engage your corners is by exaggerating the motion that your lips make when you say we and ooh, okay? So you don't actually have to say we and ooh, uh, but what the corners, what the action that your corners are doing are engaging those muscles. Okay, uh, it looks weird, but a lot of things that we do as clarinet players look weird. So it's just kind of something you do just to figure it out. Uh, so this is how I start clarinets, clarinet players, my very beginning players out with getting a good clarinet embouchure. I do not tell them to roll their bottom lip over their bottom teeth. And that's because it's really hard for beginner players to understand how much bottom lip to roll over their bottom teeth. And really the word roll is even misleading sometimes. So what I do is, and this you can do this for yourself because you have your barrel and your mouthpiece and a reed on, okay? You can do this for yourself. And I just have my students freeze with their mouth open just a little bit. And they're not, they don't move a muscle, okay? Uh, and here, I'll come a little closer so you can see what I do. So you're going to rest the reed on the bottom lip. And then you're actually going to bring the mouthpiece. So this is probably where the bottom lip is, like right there. Okay. You're actually going to bring in 
the embouchure into the mouth, and with it's going to come the lip. But at this point, the bottom lip is unengaged. Okay, you just bring it in. And then your upper teeth are going to come down and rest on top of the mouthpiece. Okay. Resting the upper teeth on the mouthpiece. That is, uh, the word rest is so important there. A lot of students think that if the teeth are being used, then they're doing something instead of just hanging out, okay? Uh, but it is very, very important that students know that the upper teeth are just resting on the mouthpiece. That's all they do. They're not doing anything else, okay? So, you bring it in, upper teeth resting, and then your corners are gonna, that's when I tell students to bring their corners in. Now, the way that I describe the corners coming in for students, um, it's gonna be, so it'll be obviously your corners and also your upper lip that are acting like a drawstring. So um, in case you don't know what a drawstring bag is, it's kind of like an athletic bag where the strings are the actual straps that you have around your shoulders. And when you grasp the straps and you pull, that's when the fabric comes in and it closes. That cinching of the fabric where you have equal firm pressure is what your muscles are doing around the clarinet mouthpiece and reed, okay? So when you get to this step, I like to say corners in like a drawstring, and that kind of gives them a good image as to how you really need those muscles to be coming inward, okay? Uh, Yeah, yeah, I was trying to think if there was something else I needed to add. Something, it's not necessarily a step, but it's something that needs to happen, and that's the flat chin, or the pointy chin. I grew up calling it a flat chin, and I've since changed it to pointy chin, because I think that that gives clarinet students a better idea for exactly what their chin is doing, okay? I would advise against having students make this face Okay, it does feel like your skin is being stretched across your chin. Um, however, when we do that, we tend to roll too much of our bottom lip under. Okay, uh, so really what I found, I was trying to figure out, okay, so how can we get a beautiful flat chin um, for students who maybe still have it kind of cushy and they're not really sure what, what, how to do that? And what I was thinking was, um, I really think having firm corners is, and make sure those are nice and in and engaged, I really think that that's a key in keeping your flat chin. Because if you try to play clarinet, or if you try to set the embouchure without, uh, without your corners engaged, it your bottom, your chin is going to be cushy, okay? That's what I like to call it, cushy or wrinkly sometimes. If you have suggestions or if you have something that's worked for you in your clarinet section on making sure that uh, your chin is pointy and flat, please feel free to email me at clarinethq at gmail.com and I'll include it in these videos or you can comment on the video itself and, and I'll, I'll make sure that I notice that. Um, something that's important that this, I don't know, to be honest, I haven't run into this, but this sometimes helps with making sure uh, that students know that they're doing this correctly is that I always tell students that in order to play clarinet, if you have the correct embouchure, then you should probably have a double chin. Okay, um, that may not be the case, uh, but I, I think it, it helps really emphasize how important that pointy chin is, okay? Um, 
Let's see, did I go through all, oh, okay. So something that is difficult to address, especially with a beginner that hasn't been playing for a long time, is exactly how much bottom lip to, to be either, uh, to be inside your mouth, I guess, to be over those bottom teeth. Um, this is where it's difficult because each student is different. Um, each person and each clarinet player, they're gonna have different sized lips. My bottom lip is bigger, and so it looks like I have more bottom lip in my mouth than I actually do. Uh, and so something that actually my husband told me that could be helpful is, so you take the dry part of your bottom lip, and where it meets the wet part on the inside, where, where that line is, see if you can feel it. That may be a good point for your student or for you to figure out how much bottom lip to put in their mouth. That does not work for my bottom lip. Uh, however, it may work for yours, it may work for someone in your clarinet section or for your student. Um, Really, that's where private lessons come in handy. That's the reason why I started Clarinet Headquarters, is to provide those private lessons so that we can figure out, okay, what works for you? Really, as long as uh, the corners are engaged, you've got a pointy chin, and your upper teeth are resting on top of the mouthpiece, just resting, then you're pretty much, you're going to be in good shape. Some common problems that I kind of just addressed with a uh, clarinet embouchure that you may see is I call it the disappearing bottom lip. And that's really just when you can't see their bottom lip at all, meaning their entire vowel is inside of their mouth. And that has, that's, that's no good. That's got to go. So like I said earlier, where your, the dry part of your lip meets the wet part of your lip, that may be a good spot for that person, or at the very least, it'll get them aware of their bottom lip, okay? Something else that happens is the complete opposite of the disappearing lip. Sometimes you get students that almost like how their lip felt like this. Okay? That is a little, that's an easier fix. You just tell them that their bottom lip they have to have some of it inside their mouth. The wet part of the lip should not be anywhere on the outside, okay? Um, something else that happens with the clarinet embouchure is I call it either the smiling embouchure or a straight-lined embouchure, and I have to watch myself for this. Really all that means is their corners aren't engaged or they're engaged going the wrong direction. We don't want our corners going out. We need them coming in, remember, like a drawstring. So, if you see this, okay, probably that means that they're, that they're biting. And the cure, engage their corners. Make sure they know this exercise they can do. Make sure they know we and ooh, we, ooh, okay, um, and that, Really, uh, getting your corners engaged, that's what's going to solve your biting problem. As a clarinet player, you need to be aware that when, um, this seems to be common among clarinet players, but I know it's definitely true for me, when I get tired, like when my face is tired from playing, I've been playing a lot, I've had rehearsals and performances, etc. Um, the first thing that I do when I get tired is I bite, and that's because my corners are the first ones to go, okay? which probably means I need to spend more time on corner exercises. So if you notice that you're biting, it might be because you're tired and you need to take a break. Um, but your corners are really, as long as they're engaged, along with your upper lip, they are going to be the cure for biting, okay? Um, I, oh, To be honest, I don't even remember if I've talked about this yet, but with your cushy chin, sometimes your chin can be cushy, again, Feel free to email me if you have a, a, a solution to this issue. But as I, for me, I've found that if your corners are engaged, then your chin's not going to be cushy. Okay? I think. I hope so. Uh, but feel free to comment below or email me at clarinethq at gmail.com. 
uh, a lot of students run into this problem or a lot of band directors run into this problem. The clarinet embouchure is beautiful. They're all set up, they're ready to go. And then when they play, everything goes away. You, it just, their muscles just dissolve into nothingness and not the greatest sound comes out. Um, it's not all bad. It means that they at least know what their mouth needs to be doing, what the embouchure should be looking like. Um, that their corners are engaged and their chin slat and their upper teeth are resting on the mouthpiece and all that good stuff. It really, all that is, is that's just a lack of muscle control. And I was thinking, if your corners are in, and if you've really worked up that embouchure, um, then you should be okay with getting that sound out. Teaching embouchure has to be one of the hardest things for a clarinet player or a clarinet teacher, okay? Um, so it's okay if you have to experiment sometimes. But in my experience, I've found that when a student has everything set up perfectly and then it just disintegrates, it's just because those muscles are not, they're not uh, strong enough yet. Um, if little air pockets are happening down here when they play, then that also means that their corners are not engaged. Because otherwise, that air wouldn't even be able to get down in there. Let's see, let me look at my notes. Um, ways that you can reinforce a good embouchure for yourself and for your students can be through long tones or if you are a clarinet student in band class um, when you do warm-ups together focusing on corners in that really I mean you probably could have guessed corners are so important in your clarinet playing okay it's something that every day I'm, I'm working I'm making sure that my corners are nice and strong. Uh, another way that you can reinforce uh, your good embouchure is when you're practicing, okay? It's fine to isolate just one thing at a time. Put aside X number of minutes and say, I'm going to do this scale or maybe my chromatic scale, and you are only going to concentrate on your embouchure. Okay, I highly suggest doing it in front of a mirror. Um, I kind of have a mirror in front of me right now because I'm doing this on my phone and I have the camera facing me. So that way when I do this, I can actually see what it looks like. And it is imperative that not only do, can we feel and be aware of our facial muscles when we play clarinet, but you have to watch in the mirror so that you can see if your chin is cushy or if it's flat, if your corners are in, or if they're out, okay? Um, or having a little mirror on your stand you can get like at a craft store or something. Make sure that you have a mirror so that you can watch yourself in the mirror when you play. Um, I think that's all I have today. Uh, so something that I always tell my students that helps them remember about the clarinet embouchure and how it's supposed to work. I always tell them, corners in, pointy chin. Not only does it rhyme, it's kind of catchy, and it gets to the point. Corners in, pointy chin. Um, feel free, please follow me on Instagram, clarinet.hq, or you can email me any questions or suggestions uh, at clarinethq at gmail.com. And thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you guys next time.